In this lesson, we're going to be talking about doing dynamic malware analysis. And I should point out up front that there is a lot of danger in doing dynamic malware analysis because what you're actually doing is you are going to be running the malware and seeing what it's doing as it's actually happening. Now, of course, that means that you're running a known piece of malicious software or maybe not well-known or not known yet, but you're running a piece of malicious software and there is certainly the possibility of damage being done to either your system or your network or information stolen from your system or your network. So what you probably want to do is have a sandbox of some type or another, probably a virtual machine that's isolated in some way so that it can't get to other systems or get to maybe the internet except in a very restricted fashion. So having said all of that and all of the disclaimers about what we are doing here, I'm actually going to show you a couple of techniques. Now, the first one is just bringing the piece of software up in something called, in this case, it's a debugger. And we're going to use a software package called Ollie Debug. And Ollie Debug is going to open my program for me. I'm going to see what we've got here that we can open up and find something interesting about. So I actually want to open up a piece of software here called ZSB. And this is the Zeus botnet. So I'm opening up a botnet client in my debugger. And one thing that it's going to do once it's done analyzing everything that's in this program is it's actually going to do a disassembly for me. So we're going to take the machine code that was written out in this program file on the disk, and we're going to convert that machine code back to assembly language, which is a bit more human readable than machine code is. Once it's done this disassembly and presented us with the assembly language version of the program, what I'm then going to be able to do is execute the program in a step-by-step -step fashion. So I can actually see what's happening as I run through the program. I can run it one instruction at a time and see what happens to my system as well as the pieces of memory that are controlled by this program. And what we're doing here is actually going through all of the different system DLLs that are being used by this program. Now, here's actually the program. Let me bring this open. It's a pretty busy window, but what you can see here in the main window, which is in the upper left, is actually the assembly language that is associated with this program. So here's the actual code that is going to be executed. And you can see the different boxes here, like the upper right, you can see the registers and what they're currently set to. And in the lower right, there is some memory segments there. And in the lower left, you can see where we are in a different part of the program or a different part of the section of memory where this program is actually residing. Now, what I could do here is I could run the debugged application, and I could do things like set breakpoints so that I could stop at particular places. I can do a step into or a step over. And again, this is stepwise execution of the program that we're actually running. So we're again going to go an instruction at a time through the program. Now, I don't actually have a sandbox here that I would feel comfortable doing this with, but you can see that this program here gives you a lot of control over the execution of the program. And in reality, just going through this process could take actually several lessons 
but just to give you an overview of a way of doing dynamic malware analysis, you could certainly use a debugger like this or something like the immunity debugger, which is very similar in what it does to this particular one and is also available for free. So I'm going to close out of that and let me show you some other utilities that we can use that will give us the ability to actually look at things that are going on. So looking for Procmon as an example, and I'm gonna run this program called Procmon. And what Procmon is doing is it's showing different system calls for the various processes that are running. So you can see We've got a number of read files. We've got a query directory. We've got an open registry key here. You can see all of the different system calls that are being executed on this system by all of the programs that are currently loaded up and running. So this can be really useful to see what's happening. And again, if I were actually running the Zeus botnet client, I could have this process monitor open to see what it's doing in terms of maybe network connections, as well as reading files and looking at registry keys, anything that it does related to system level calls, I can actually see here. So you can see there's a TCP send and a TCP receive that are associated with these processes. So again, I can see all of the system calls using this Procmon utility. Now, in addition to that, I want to run this program called Proc EXP, and this is a process explorer. And this presents a slightly different view of processes. What I can see with processes with the process explorer is I can see the process ID, I can see the CPU time, the private bytes, the working set. And if I were to right click on one of these, I could bring up properties on it. And I get a whole bunch of information about the path that it has, the command line that was used to start it up, the current directory that it's running in, as well as the user that it is running as. I get some performance statistics, a performance graph. And over here, I get strings, just like we looked at with the dynamic malware analysis where we were doing strings on just an executable on the disk. What I'm looking at here is strings that are in memory. So we're looking at the memory image of a running program and taking a look at the strings in that memory image. So you can see all of the different strings that are here in this running program. So this is another really useful utility. Again, it's one of the sysinternals tools that are available from Microsoft, or if you see up at the top there, it says www.sysinternals.com. If you go there, it will redirect you to a Microsoft site where you can download this and other tools. And again, this is really useful for getting a dynamic look at running programs particularly with regards to the memory that is currently in use with that program.